All right, sports fans, how's everybody out there doing? William Martin coming at you one more time here on YouTube with another edition of the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge Podcast. Now, it took Dallas Cowboys team owner Jerry Jones more than 27 years to publicly admit what most people knew when it happened. And that was that Jones screwed up when he all but fired. Uh, of course, they said it was mutually agreeing to part ways with former head coach Jimmy Johnson. Now, in spite of what Jones wants to say, Johnson was the architect behind the famed Cowboys dynasty of the 1990s that won three Super Bowl titles in a four-year span. But it was the ego of Jones who felt that he was not getting enough credit in part being that he is also the team's president and general manager. Now, Jones replaced Johnson in 1994 with Barry Switzer. This came on the heels of the Cowboys winning their second consecutive Super Bowl title, and it sent shockwaves around the National Football League. And even though the Cowboys would win another Super Bowl title in 1995, it just didn't have the same feel to it. But since that season, Jones has never... And I repeat, never come close to attaining this success again. Since winning their final Super Bowl, the Cowboys have never been able to get past the divisional round of the playoffs. And since 1995, Jones has had seven different head coaches and his issues with control have cost him and his beloved franchise. But now at the age of 78, just maybe... Jones is starting to reflect on his tenure as the owner of the Cowboys, and he is now asking himself what could have been. Had Jerry Jones have simply just stayed out of the way and let Jimmy Johnson run things, the Cowboys dynasty would have eclipsed that of what we saw of the Pittsburgh Steelers of the 1970s when they won four championships in six years, while also being the precursor to what we saw with the New England Patriots with Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. You think about the Hall of Famers that were on those Cowboys teams, Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, Larry Allen, Michael Irvin, Deion Smith, and Charles Haley. Then the impact of the heart of the Herschel Walker trade to the Minnesota Vikings which gave the Dallas Cowboys so much draft capital. Uh, Jimmy was the architect behind arguably one of the greatest offensive lines ever because in those days, offensive lines were not as big and as massive as what we saw from the Dallas Cowboys under Jimmy Johnson. And of course, it was a game changer. Now, on top of all of that, Jimmy Johnson knew how to keep his players and coaches alike in check. While, you know, things for the Cowboys became more of a country club under Barry Switzer as he was trying to be a player's cloak coach and they really took advantage of it. And you look now for Jerry Jones. He is a competitor. I mean, this guy's a billionaire. You don't get to that level of success financially without, you know, taking no for an answer, but at the same time without being aggressive. And it pains him and has to pain him that his beloved Cowboys have not won the Super Bowl title in 25 years. Now, since the Cowboys last won the Super Bowl, Jerry Jones has had to sit back and watch the Patriots win six. The New York Giants, a rival in the division, they've won two more. The Philadelphia Eagles, another rival in the division, has gone on to win a title. Both the Rams and Chargers have moved back to Los Angeles. The Houston Oilers became the Tennessee Titans. The Browns left the NFL and came back. The Oakland Raiders are now the Las Vegas Raiders. And the Manning brothers combined to win four Super Bowl titles. Now, the NFC East, which was once the glory division of the NFL, and this is what Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson walked into uh, back in 1989, uh, it's far from being that. And it's no longer a difficult division. Uh, and, you know, to give you an idea, the Cowboys have not won consecutive NFC East titles since 1996. So I've said it before and I will say it again. I've even written about it. You can check this out at 300 pounds of sports knowledge dot com. The old stuff from several years ago. The control freak in Jerry Jones is the reason why the Cowboys are the mediocre franchise that they are. Jerry is more worried about the Dallas Cowboys brand than he is winning. He's more concerned about AT&T Stadium, which is basically a shrine to himself, getting close to 100,000 people in that 
uh, massive arena, uh, the Dallas Cowboys brand, all of that stuff uh, being one of the most valuable sports franchises in all of professional sports. But nonetheless, the Cowboys don't win. And it comes back to not only drafting players, drafting quality players, but drafting leadership. And you look at the impact players that were brought in by Jimmy Johnson uh, that helped win titles. 1989, his first year, Troy Aikman, Daryl Johnston, Mark Stepnowski, Tony Tolbert. 1990, Emmett Smith. All of this through the draft. Uh, 1991, Russell Maryland, Alvin Harper, Dixon Edwards, Eric Williams, Leon Lett, Larry Brown, and Darren Woodson. And then from 94 to 2000, the only impact players that the Cowboys drafted were Larry Allen, Dexter Coakley and Greg Ellis. And of course, in drafting Greg Ellis in 1998, Jerry Jones passed on wide receiver Randy Moss in the draft and it really hurt him. And we saw him a couple of years after that give up multiple first round picks to the Seattle Seahawks for Joey Galloway and it never worked out. I remember, Galloway blew out his knee in his very first game in a Cowboys uniform. Now, things didn't get turned around from the for the Cowboys from a draft perspective until 2003 when Bill Parcells became the head coach and under Parcells the Cowboys did draft the likes of Jason Witten, Brady James, Terrence Newman, Julius Jones, DeMarcus Ware, Marcus Spears, Marion Barber III, Chris Canty, and Jay Ratliff, all guys who did go on to have impacts uh, during their time with, uh, playing with the Cowboys. Now, recently, Jones has found some solid impact players, but the Cowboys simply lack the leadership from their players or coaches that they need in order to win championships. And the thing is, at the end of the day, the Cowboys, they're still flashy. You know, people are attracted to them because they're the Cowboys. But at the end of the day, the results will not change. And the Cowboys won't get any closer to being a championship team until Jerry Jones stops being Jerry Jones. And the reason why I say that, Jerry has made himself the star of the show. What other NFL team do you see where the owner is one of the first people interviewed after each game on Sunday? It's the Dallas Cowboys because Jerry has made himself the face of the franchise. And at the end of the day, you know, you want players to buy in. You want players to be this and that and be team conscious. Jerry Jones is not team conscious. Jerry Jones is business conscious. And there is a big difference. There's a big dynamic uh, in, in regards to that uh, when it comes to winning at the professional game. Jerry Jones's ego is what made Jimmy Johnson leave. Because at the end of the day, Jerry thought that he could get any coach to win. And he did in 95 with Barry Switzer. But the thing is, that Dallas Cowboys team was set up for so much more success. They could have dominated the 1990s to the point that maybe John Elway doesn't get a Super Bowl championship. Maybe Brett Favre and the Packers don't get a Super Bowl championship. Um, and again, you know, they were just set up for, for, for so much success. Offensively, their philosophy was simple. Give the ball to Emmitt Smith and get out of his way. That line paved tolls for him. You think back, you know, Michael Irvin was the playmaker. Troy Aikman, you know, as a quarterback, you know, he never had to go out there and put that team on his back per se. But Troy knew how to get to get the job done. And Troy was also a leader. You had to impact players on that defensive side of the ball. You know, Russell uh, Maryland at defensive tackle, Charles Haley rushing the passer, uh, Deion Sanders, Brock Marion, so many other guys. Uh, in that secondary and of course the Cowboys had swagger but Jimmy Johnson had Jerry Jones left him alone Jimmy Johnson would have allowed them to have swagger but it would have been controlled swagger and that was the biggest difference so I think for Jerry he sits back and, and finally realizes you know what maybe I made a mistake no Jerry you did make a mistake because you let the immediate success get to your head instead of looking at the long-term or potential long-term success. And I'll tell you right now, Jerry Jones is in the Hall of Fame as an owner, uh, but nonetheless, his impact on the game could have been a lot better. And I know that he is thirsty, super thirsty uh, for another Super Bowl championship. But the thing is, you know, he's made a lot of questionable decisions. He held on to Jason Garrett uh, too long as a head coach. Why? Because he likes yes men. 
And Jimmy Johnson was not a yes man. Jimmy Johnson did it his way, but his way worked. And, you know, for me, it's one of those we never know what could have been. But in, in reality, looking back on it, at least five Super Bowl championships. That's what Jerry Jones and that Cowboys team should have had. So you just simply ask yourself all these years later, what could have been if the eagle of Jerry Jones did not get in his own way. So, folks, that is going to wrap it up. And as always, I want to take this time out to thank you for tuning into the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge Podcast here on YouTube. I want to take the time out to thank all of you fine folks out there for tuning in. And if you have not already, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. Now, if you're on Twitter, please feel free to follow me at 300 Pounds of Sports. And like I always say, if you follow me, it'll be my pleasure to follow you right back. There's also the Sports Discussion Group on Facebook at the Sports Depot 365. You can check it out. Drop a line and be a part of one of the better sports debating sites going on social media. So once again, fine folks, my name is William Martin. Take care and have yourselves a wonderful day.